What's going on everybody? It's your boy Kilo Loco and today we're going to be talking about static members and class members and if you don't really know what that is I'm talking about when you see the keyword static in front of like a variable or a let um, or a class in front of a var or, or a let or in front of like a method right so we're going to be going over that um, right now and I want to go over what the difference between static and um, class are and also why you would use you know static or class versus just like a regular uh, ver like a regular property or a regular method so let's get into that right now so as you can see we have just a blank playground we're going to keep it all very simple um, first thing that I want to do is I just want to write out some just regular properties and a regular method so we're going to have um, and this is all going to be contained inside of a helper class we'll say and what we're going to do is we're going to do the two different types of properties which is um, a stored property and a computed property and then we'll just also have a regular method inside of our helper class so let me go ahead and type that out for y'all real 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 quick All right, so as you can see, we have just a helper class. It's just, you can call it whatever you want. Um, and then we just have your, your regular stored property. That's usually what you're probably gonna um, have in most of your uh, objects, you know, in your classes or in your structs. Um, and once again, um, all this is the same so far for uh, structs and classes, everything is the same so far. Um, the regular computed property is of type string. It's just going to return that string that we see right here. And then um, the regular method, you know, it's just a function and all it's doing is just printing out this, right? So um, all this should look pretty familiar to you. Um, where, where we start seeing some uh, different behaviors is the way that we invoke some of the um, functions for static and regular uh, for static and class methods or members and um, you can see the way that you would have to um, use one of these regular uh, properties like the regular stored property the way that you would use that is you would have to actually create a helper object right you'd have to initialize it and then what you'd have to do is you have to say dot um, regular um, regular stored property right so if we were to um, go ahead and run that, as you can see over here is regular stored property. Um, and, but the, the main thing that you wanna notice is that there is an instance of this helper. That's the huge difference. So usually you'll probably just see it like helper equals mm, that helper like that. Mm, mm, mm. And then we mm, 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 like that. So usually you're gonna probably see it like this where the um, where you like initialize the object on one line and then you start using that object somewhere else right um, but just to keep to keep it very clear we're, we're not gonna we're not gonna do that we're gonna I'm gonna show you so that you can see how it looks different on every line so let me go through and um, do the the regular computed property and the um, regular method as well all right so as you can see once again have to initialize each of um have to initialize the actual helper object before i can use um this property and um once again have to initialize the helper object before using the regular method okay kyle we get it come on move forward let's do this all right okay so what we're going to start off with is static first and static can be used on both classes and structs so um, with the static all, all, all we would be doing is just putting the static keyword in front of each of these and it causes different behavior so let me do that for you right now all right so as you can see here um, everything looks pretty much the same I mean obviously I gave them different names but um, the only difference that we see is the keyword static in front of each of these. Now, what that means is that we can access any of these properties without actually initializing an object. So we don't, we no longer have to say helper um, open parentheses, close parentheses, because it, it doesn't require the actual, um, it doesn't require an instance of that object to be used. So what we can do is you just do this helper dot, um, regular uh, helper dot static stored property helper dot computed uh, property a uh, static computed property and then helper dot static method right and as you can see we're able to access each of these 
without even initializing it, which is really cool. So, um, and and as you can see down here, these are the print statements, so the regular method and the and the static method. So it's really cool and it's it's really handy now. Generally, you only want to put static um, members into your classes or into your structs if you plan on using them in other places and you don't really plan on changing them. Now, there's one thing that you really have to be careful about, and that's this bad boy right here. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Lock this one up because a static, um, a static stored property is useful because, as you can see right here on line 28, it's um, it's useful because you can use it pretty much anywhere, right? You get that static stored property anywhere, but guess what? You can also change it. So if I were to say um, helper dot static stored property is equal to modified modified property, well, guess what? Now this static stored property, when it runs again. Is it, it's going to actually be modified and it can mess up your code. So if you're planning on your static stored property to be something um, in one area of code, but you changed it in a different area of code, it could really cause you some some headaches. And you don't you don't want headaches. You don't want headaches. So don't do that. Don't do that. Okay. So just be careful um, with static stored properties. Yeah, um, maybe you know put them as let, or if you're going to be um, modifying them make sure that they are like on a private set which would essentially allow you to only modify them within that class um but that's a discussion for another day all right so we'll keep that in mind um next is class um the class keyword and class is just like static in most ways um the only difference between static and class is that you can actually override um the the properties and the methods but there's also another difference in that you can't have a class stored property and the reason for that is because by um, by you know default a class you can override um, any of the the stored properties anyways that's the whole entire point of inheritance and, and polymorphism and things like and things like that yeah so um, let me go ahead and write out so we only have um, a class computed property and a class method, we won't have a class stored property. That's just something that you get by default without the special keyword of class. So let me do that for you. All right, so as we can see, we have the um, the class computed property and the class method, which look exactly like um, you know um, the static um, prop computed property and the static method. So once again, if we go down here, we can do that that amazing greatness of doing just helper dot class uh, computed property, and then helper dot class um, uh, class method. And once again, it gives you access to some functionality that you might want to keep in that class because it's like relevant to that type of object or all the code in there is kind of relevant to each other. And you want to keep it organized like that. Um, so as you can see, you can you can um, do pretty much the same thing that you would do with a static, but it's a class. And once again, the difference is that it can be overridden. So um, pretty much the same um, the same syntax helper dot you know class computer property helper dot class method property all right kyle we get it just show us the subclass already oh I'm, I'm going okay god don't be rude all right so all i'm gonna do is i'm going to subclass the helper class um and uh obviously it's gonna conform to the help uh it's going to subclass from helper um but i'm gonna override these just so that you can see that there is a there is a difference um so yeah, uh, just make sure that everything is spelled exactly the same because if you were to do a, um, a bar class computed property without putting the keyword class, then it's it's technically a completely different property for the instance of that object. So yeah. All right, so we're back. And um, as you can see, um, I left it this way just so that you could, you could really see the difference. So, um, since they are the exact same 
uh, it's telling us that we need to use the keyword override just to make sure that we're saying, hey, um, I know that my my superclass has this property or has this method, and I know that there's functionality inside that property or method, and I'm going to change that functionality. So that's why you need to say override. And once again, like I was saying before, if you don't have that keyword class in front of it, then these become something completely different. These are two completely different members. It's now um, this this uh, class computed property is a, a, a property of some of a help a sub helper that has actually been initialized or uh, and or the same thing goes with um, the class method. So be very careful about that. So what we're going to do is we're just going to say override class. And we're going to say override, override, and put that class keyword back in there. So now we're overriding the functionality of the previous class. And as we can see down here, if we do sub helper dot class computed property and sub helper dot um, class method, we will we will see the changes that over here that the class computed property for the helper method or for the for the helper and the class computed property for the sub helper are going to be two different um, properties. All right, Xcode decided to get dead on me. So um, <laughs> here we go. All right. Um, I didn't mean to say property, but uh, what I meant to say different value. So um, subclass computed property, right? And then class computed property. So as you can see, they were changed. They're different. Um, and yeah, so once again, you're usually going to use, you know, static, uh, static and class members when you have some type of functionality that has to do with the class um, that you that that has to do with a class or a struct, any object. And um, you don't want to have an instance of that object to be created just so that you can use that functionality. Um, like I said, just be careful with the, the static stored property um because that can really mess you up and then um also you're mainly going to want to use static and and class keywords um especially on the methods if you're only if you're doing something that doesn't require like background threading or like um requires like some type of resource that can that that you don't want to be constantly recreated or something like that so like networking requests um you know depending on how you structure it you may not want it in there but i mean that's that's pretty much it that's all you guys really need to know um and that is uh how uh you use static and class members those are the differences and you know hopefully hopefully i taught you something new today all right guys so if you like the video make sure you give it a thumbs up make sure you subscribe um Follow me on Twitter. Do all the good stuff, you know, all the things that people ask you to do on YouTube and, and things like that. Because, uh, you know, Kila Locos, hey, he's, he, he's, that guy's all right, right? That guy's all right. All right, guys. Well, um, thanks for uh, hanging in there. And above all else, make sure you keep coding passionately. Blech.